Three is Jack Monase, and he'll be joined uh, by his undersecretary, Brian McClinton. Uh, Jack has been with Wildlife and Fisheries now as the top man for four years, and uh, Brian's been there for 13 years, and they have a lot to discuss, including hunting and fishing fees. So without further ado, here is Secretary Monase. Thank you so much. Certainly appreciate the invitation, number one. It's always a pleasure to come here and, and talk to the people who have really supported us over the years. I'd like to introduce the rest of my staff here. Randy Myers, who's in charge of wildlife. I have my deputy uh, secretary, Rob Shadowin, who is a, legislature, a legislator with me uh, in Baton Rouge. Brian McClinton, who's in charge of my money. Uh, Patrick Banks, who is in charge of fisheries, and uh, Chad Abair, who is my head of uh, enforcement, he's the colonel, and also Ed Pratt, who's in charge of my public relations. Uh, these guys do a great job for the department, and certainly these are some of the people who can answer some of your questions. <clears throat> As all of you are familiar, we're, we're this year proposing a, a new licensing restructure that would generate some new revenue uh, for the department. I can tell you for the past 20 years, we have been self-generated from the revenues that we raise from our licenses and from the revenues that are generated off of our properties. Uh, with that being said, it's been 21 years since we've had a licensing restructure in the state of Louisiana. We currently have 115 licenses you can choose from in order to go do your fishing or hunting uh, in the state of Louisiana. We're gonna reduce that to 35, so a lot of the licenses will be consolidated. So when you look at what it costs you to do that, in reality, if you had to buy all of those other privileges, you'd probably end up with a good deal. It's been 36 years since the commercial side has seen an increase. Now. I don't have to tell you how long that's been because, I, uh, you know, 20 years ago, it cost you today three times more to come to this luncheon than it did 20 years ago. So things change, things go up, and that's just part of life that we have to deal with. Biggest, big part of our revenues off of our uh, property is, is the minerals we receive on one and a half million acres of land that we oversee. And in 2013, th that revenue was about 73 million a year. Uh, this past couple of years, uh, we've seen that drop to 13 million. That's a $60 million reduction. So you can imagine what impact that has on our ability to be able to manage those properties. At least 46 other states have passed new licensing uh, structures over the past 20 years. And so we have not uh, been able to do that. Uh, since last receiving those state funds in the year 2000, when the uh, last license structure took place, we have been tasked with 40 plus new programs. A lot of people don't realize that either. Millions of dollars have been spent on, on dealing with giant salvania on all of our waterways throughout the state. We've had to do stock assessment programs. You know, we've been infested with feral hogs now for the last past four or five years, and that's getting to be a, a, a worse, uh, bigger problem. And, uh, you know, our enforcement agents in, in 2000 didn't do any uh, search and rescue. We're now the leaders in the primary maritime security for the entire state of Louisiana. We take part in every hurricane that takes place. Previous, uh, just recently in the, in the ice storm, we performed over 800 missions to bring doctors and nurses to their work site and to bring them home during all of the shift changes. So we, we've been tasked with a lot of things uh, that we weren't tasked with uh, 20 years ago. Chronic wasting disease is a major problem in all of the surrounding states where uh, the deer populations have uh, experienced that, that problem. And we've been fortunate because our management and, and our oversight of that has kept Louisiana free from chronic wasting disease so far to date. 
Uh, what have we done to cut our costs? I can tell you, when I took over in 2014, uh, 14, <laughs> in 2017, uh, when I came on board, I knew and started looking at the budget and realizing that uh, we were going to experience a serious issue when it comes to funding uh, within the department. Since then, we have reduced our staffing by over 154 people. That's, that's positions that we have not filled uh, since 2017. You know, all of our divisions, uh, including our enforcement, uh, all of our vehicles, we had a, a, a plan in place back then to replace them every 100,000 miles. We've now extended that to 150,000 miles. That gives me a little heartburn because when you've got an agent by himself stuck in the woods with a vehicle that has that much mileage, I'm a little concerned safety-wise to make sure that they have the proper equipment to get the job done out there. Uh, good part about restructuring. You know, one of the things that, that people don't realize is our agency is able to uh, lever some, some federal dollars with the amount of licenses that we sell. That's going to be increased with the new licensing structure. And one of the main things that people all uh, too often overlook is the streamlining. 115 licenses to 35. It has to be streamlined. When the Secretary of Wildlife and Fisheries doesn't know which license to buy to go do things out in our state, we got a problem. And so consolidating all of that into 35 licenses is certainly the way to go to give people a simpler uh, way of being able to buy licenses. But I think at the end of the day, it, it gives us the opportunity not to be dependent on, on the state general fund. And, and that's an important part. You know, state, state funding is great. Uh, the state general fund is great. But I think we need to continue to be self-generated because the people who use should be the people who pay, not the people who don't fish or hunt, should not be burdened with having to pay for the, what we do in our department. What happens if we don't restructure, if it's denied? I'm going to let each one of my department heads share with you uh, what that's going to kind of look like if we don't get the funding that's necessary. And I'll start with uh, ch uh, Chief of Enforcement, uh, Colonel Hebert. Thank you, Secretary Montessi. Like you said, I'm uh, Chad Hebert. I'm the Enforcement Division Colonel. Um, the license restructure bill is really important because uh, if we end up having to, to uh, have less agents out, out and about in the water. Currently, we have about 24 uh, vacancies in the enforcement division. And uh, our, it's really important for our guys to be out on the water. Uh, just like state troopers out on the highway, we enforce all the laws on the water, uh, among other things, uh, hunting and fishing and, and boating. So when it comes to boating safety, we, we take uh, public safety very serious. Um, you know, if we have less agents on the water, that means people aren't getting checked as often, uh, possibly people drinking on boats. Uh, the amount of lives we save are, are numerous when it comes to things like that. We take impaired operators off of the water. We make sure everyone has their life jackets. If, we don't, if someone, a boat doesn't have enough life jackets for every person on their, on their vessel, we send them back to the launch until they can get more vessels, uh, more uh, life jackets, excuse me. So, you know, when you take all that in consideration and all the lives that, that we impact by, by uh, public safety on the water, it, it really makes a big impact to the citizens of Louisiana. Thank you, Chad. Yes, sir. Uh, in wildlife, Randy. Thank you. Uh, Randy Myers, Assistant Secretary, Office of Wildlife. Appreciate the opportunity to give a little bit of how this will impact our, our uh, Office of Wildlife. Uh, as Secretary Montese mentioned earlier, we have uh, nearly 1.5 million acres of wildlife management areas and refuges that we manage. Um, and certainly the revenue um, impacts to our, our staffing, uh, the ability to um, uh, fix roads, uh, fix uh, culverts that may be blown out for access to the WMAs, uh, all that is, would be negatively impacted. Um, and, and, and certainly impact our users that uh, hunt and fish or, or uh, otherwise use the uh, WMAs for other outdoor activities. Um, and additionally, um, you know, one of the jobs that we do uh, is, is 
you know, our response to nuisance animals. Uh, we, each one of our regional offices on a constant basis receives complaints about uh, nuisance animals and, and we're always tasked with having to respond uh, in, in, in regards to some complaints and this certainly uh, with reduction in staff has impacted our ability to respond in a timely manner, uh, particularly when, when, when you have uh, an animal that may be injured on the side of the road and we like to you know, take care of it as soon as we can. So um, uh, those, those are the, the two major things on the wildlife side. Thank you, Randy. Uh, in fisheries, uh, Patrick Banks. Thank you, Secretary Montessay. I'm Patrick Banks. I'm the Assistant Secretary for Fisheries. Um, the funding for the agency is extremely important uh, to, the, to the Office of Fisheries and the work that we do. One of the uh, most critical things that we do on a weekly basis is our uh, management and control of aquatic nuisance uh, weeds, plants. Uh, you heard Secretary Montessay mention earlier the, the term giant salvinian. That's one of those invasive aquatic plants that we've had a terrible time with, both from the bayous and the bays down in south Louisiana all the way up to the beautiful flooded swamps, places like Lake Bistano in north Louisiana. And so the work that we do to try to control the aquatic, <coughs> excuse me, aquatic weeds is very important. And without sufficient funding, uh, we're just not able to uh, do that. Uh, when we first started under this administration, we were spending uh, about one-fifth of the entire uh, a, um, Office of Fisheries budget just battling aquatic weeds. Because of the reductions in revenue that the Secretary spoke about, we just don't have the money to put towards it anymore. And so that money's dropped uh, quite considerably, and we're just not able to keep control of those uh, aquatic weeds like we used to. So that's uh, one of the big impacts uh, that will occur if uh, we don't realize some new revenue. Uh, the other one is, is the management of our commercial seafood industries as well as our recreational industry. And so uh, we may have to take a more conservative approach if we don't have enough biologists to go out and sample those fish species. And so we may have to reduce the amount of seasons we have and things like that, which means that seafood might not be as readily available as it once was. So those are the types of uh, certainly um, increase, I'm sorry, impacts that we would see to the Office of Fisheries if we don't see new revenue into the agency. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, my head of finance that tells me all the time I, I don't have any money to do anything is Brian McClinton. <laughs> We're broke, Jack. <laughs> Say no again. Hey, thank y'all for having us here today. Um, the most impact for us is 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 my licensing section. You know, we're we, we deal we're dealing with with COVID last year with the record selling of, of actual boats, and we fell a great deal behind. Working with fewer people, it's harder to get those boat registrations mailed back out, or or process commercial licenses, or dealing with the phones and dealing with the public. The public's the one that's actually suffering the most, sort of, with that type of funding, but. Since I have since to have you here, I, I will say that the department, you know, oil and gas has been great to the department, as Jack said, in 2013, we, you know, $73 million, we were able to sort of generate a surplus. Since 2016, we've been spending more money than we've been making. And so as a department, we had to make a decision. We went to the legislature in 2018 to look at a fee increase. At the time, they said, y'all still have a fund balance, and it was all on the, on the backs of the recreational users. Y'all need to come back whenever, whenever you're out of money. Well, that's where we're at today. You know, we've, we spent the last, since, 20, since 2018, well, really since 2016, we've been cutting back. We've cut every discretionary expenditure category we have. We've cut travels, we, we've cut contracts, we've cut every supplies, operating services. It's, you know, over the last five years. And we've been doing that in the hopes of, you know, oil and gas turning around, or in, in the hopes of the feds have been looking at some Restore America with Wildlife Act or some other money funding sources. And we're just at the point now that that's not an option. I mean, next year, we're gonna have a hole. We're not gonna have enough money to, in our conservation fund, to fully fund the department without some sort of assistance from the legislature. And currently there is, there's a plan to, I think $16 million in the funds bill to sort of help us get through next year. But that way, that means now that we're on taxpayer dollars, we're receiving general fund, which, you know, as a, the North American model for conservation is a sort of a user pay thing. So this bill allows us to continue to be a user pay system. If not, then we're gonna be reliant upon the, the legislature to give us general funds. So our message kind of to them is, would you rather, you know, 
money going to your district or would you rather the, allowing the users to sort of, sort of support themselves? Um, when we came up with this bill, we came up with the amounts of money. We looked at the other southern states. We put the, the increases sort of within the range of the margins of those states. We, like Jack said, we're consolidating significantly the number of privileges to where each you get a little bit more bang for your buck. We're realigning revenues to where the users support their passion or the commercial industry supports their industry. And there's a lot of good things about this bill that I'm really proud of. And I'll, I'll stop talking and we can answer questions. Unless you want to wrap up, sir. I think you've gotten a pretty good idea of where, where we are today, you know. Uh, I certainly want to see the department thrive and, and provide the services that we need to provide to, to all of our people in this state. You know, we consider it the sportsman's paradise. If we are the sportsman's paradise, like everybody claims, then, then our agency should be self-generated and should be, you know, the money that we need to get our jobs done should come from the people who actually use, go out and fish, go out and hunt, use our, our, all of our properties and, and uh, allow us to provide them those necessary uh, services uh, like search and rescue when those uh, times come. We've had three hurricanes in the past year, an ice storm, we've had COVID, all of that has had a serious impact on our department. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions and, and uh, see if uh, we can get those answered for you. Yes, sir. Secretary, are you raising out-of-state recreational fees to comparative levels to states like Montana or Wyoming? Yes, sir. Our whole licensing restructure is, is well within line of what the other states charge. We've looked at that. We, we're not charging more than they are, but we, we're getting close to what what their charges are. And out-of-state users are one of the big things uh, that we've increased uh, substantially to, to reflect that and, and to reflect what the other states are uh, charging. You're yep. showing a $65 million deficit in funding over time. Um, to restructure your fees, are you trying to make up a full $65 million, or what do you propose no, these fees will make up each year where, and I, I guess maybe an easier question is, where are you now with user fees in your revenue, and what do you hope to grow to with your restructuring? We're short. We're short about thirty plus million dollars this year. We're going to be short with the with the little bit of money we have left in the conservation fund. We're going to be short about twenty million. The legislature, the governor, put seventeen million in the funds bill. To, to help us kind of get over the hill, so to speak, to see if our licensing restructure would go back, you know, would go in. And if that occurs, if the, our licensing restructure, the solvency model, would have generated $40 million, which would have completely funded and made us self-sufficient. We chose not to go that route because, you know, the pandemic and everything else that has hit our state, we said, look, our people are suffering, so let so what we did was try to address what the shortfall was going to be this this year, which was around 20 million. Our bill uh, generates about 17 million. So we're not by far, uh, uh, you know, completely funding our department, but it's certainly going to buy us the time we need, hopefully, for things to turn around and 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 we can see some new sources come in that will fully fund us. Does so, that answer your question? So you're saying Yes, ma'am. Yes. Able to Can I ask you, of that seventeen million, what is the percentage out of state versus in state? Oh. I, I, actually, I, I don't have that, that answer for you. I apologize. But they, 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 the question, to answer your question, we spend right now, we're spending about thirty-five million more a year in than we're that we're currently receiving in revenue. Of that, about sixteen and a half million come from recreational hunting and fishing, 3.2 comes from commercial, and a little over four million comes from boat registration. That's our main sources of revenue. We're addressing all of those within this. So our boat registration is going from 24 different privileges down to four. Commercial is going from 190 privileges down to 105. Like we said earlier, the recreation is going from 115 to 135. So this will increase it, the, the recreation will go from about 16 million to about 27. 
the commercial will double from 3.2 3 to 7.1, and then boat registration will go from about 4.5 million to about 6.5 million. So that totals about, like I said, 17 million dollars is what the fiscal note is, what it looks like right now. And we're hoping, like I said, that would get us to the point that we're, we're within the southern states, we get allowed, we're allowed to sort of realign our funding, and we're, um, it, it would just kind of make us competitive and less dependent upon, because right now we're right now we're 66 percent of our revenues coming from oil and gas traditionally, so we're heavily dependent upon that. If we can reduce that dependency to where we're not so dependent on oil and gas, then it just puts us in a much better situation. You know, a lot a lot of people say, well, oil and gas, oil is 65 dollars a barrel today. You know, what effect does that have on you? What they what they don't see is that a majority of our properties uh, are uh, uh, generate natural gas, not oil. And natural gas has pretty much been flat over over the time span. So about 75 percent of our revenues from oil and gas comes from from natural gas. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, well, the, the basic fishing license would go from nine fifty to seventeen dollars. Um, the basic hunt would go from fifteen to to twenty. That's a five dollar increase. The uh, the the salt water and the basic combined would be thirty two dollars, which is the same as Texas. Um, the and, and in Florida as well. I think Florida and Texas as well. The uh, the, the, the deer license or the big, we're doing away with the big game and it's just gonna be called a deer license. It's going from 14 to $15. But overall, it's, a, it's going from, you know, if you take the increase, going from 29 to 35. But it also includes archery and primitive. So you don't have to buy those additional privileges anymore. If you buy the deer stamp, you, it contains everything you have. Uh, turkey hunters save $2 because there's no longer a big game requirement. So there's, there's goes from 34 to 32. It's those types of uh, increases. So we, we had our, our economic, we have an economist on this fishery staff, and he looked at it. 66% of the people receive $10 or less increase to their hunting and fishing licenses. And so 66% of the people would be about a $10 increase or less. Yes, sir. And lifetime licenses are still good, right? Yes, sir. So if you own a lifetime license, you will still have those privileges. Um, just like the other ones we're doing away with the, with the individual lifetime license, we're only going to offer a combo, a hunt and fishing combo. So those fees are going up, but if you have one, then, then any, any privilege that it conveys will be, you know, will be accepted. Right. Yes, sir. You talking about the bear that was um, that was in the news about Port in Port Allen? Yeah. So um, that that particular bear, we uh, had a complaint um, that that bear, uh, as, as some bears do, become habituated. Uh, they'll be they'll get used to um, you know uh, rummaging through garbage and um, and unfortunately uh, we we have you know a policy and we we take each case by case, uh, but when when they get to that that uh, stage, um, it, it's unfortunate we did have to euthanize that particular bear. Um, and, and usually we see this uh, um, you know, this time of the year, uh, particularly the, the large males, um, they, they, uh, they start moving around um, and what ends up happening is they'll get used, accustomed to a food source um, and they get more aggressive and then that, they become a problem. Um, and we found that, you know, a lot, uh, when, that, when that happens, it's very difficult to uh, rehabilitate them to, um, you know, and, and we, sometimes we'll take them and, and, and re release them elsewhere, but they come right back or they become a problem somewhere else. Yeah. I'd like to follow up with that. So what is the status of the black bear now? How, how are we doing as far as the numbers? And black bear are doing real well in Louisiana. That, you know, um, in 2016, they were taken off of the endangered species list. Um, that which is a, a significant accomplishment, um, and and I say, I'd say you know even though the department took the lead, we couldn't do this alone. Uh, you know we worked with the landowners, 
uh, landowners have been very um, helpful uh, because they, you know, they took on a lot, a lot of the issues that they're seeing now with, with nuisance bears, you know, happen on, on uh, large tracts of land and uh, the landowners have, have been right there helping us manage for the black bear. Um, and, and we're very, very appreciative of that. But they, they, are, they are no longer on the endangered species list. Uh, we are seeing an expansion, um, um, you know, continued expansion of that black bear population in the state of Louisiana. Would, would I be in line if I said we had over 1,200? Uh, that, that is, that's probably close, yes. John? Uh, back to the other issue of the finances. Uh, with the ammunition shortage in the country, and certainly in Louisiana, is that going to affect the sale of hunting licenses appreciably, or do you know? Well, actually, the, the shortage, ammunition, we get, we get a we get some federal money uh, from the taxes collected on that. We get a portion of that, uh, and, and that's all calculated on the number of hunters we have and, and certified hunters that we have. So the shortage is certainly going to hurt us because if they were selling all the ammunition they could produce you know, and, and have plenty on the shelves, uh, that would mean a bigger pot of money that would be available for us to, to share in. So, so that will have an effect on it. We, people, well, and, and this is anecdotal, this isn't scientific at all, but people are very creative on how to get their, their ammunition. And uh, it's, 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 it's actually, like Secretary Montesse said, it's, you know, it's the Pittman-Robinson, the wildlife restoration grant, the biggest grant that we receive in the Office of Wildlife, it's gone for about 15 million a year to 18 million a year, and that's because of that exact thing you're talking about. The, the sales the excise tax that's collected by the manufacturer on ammunition and, 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 and guns um, has just been increasing. So in a way it's a good thing for us because we have additional federal aid money, but in a bad way we have to find the state match to match the federal grants. But we, we haven't seen that to be a problem. We haven't heard that to be a problem. Um, people, most of your common, your, your shotgun shells and things to duck on or, or squirrel on and stuff, those things are commonly readily available. It's those uh, people that have sort of those different, I can't think of the with calibers. Those are ones that have been difficult, but you even actually see people evolve. They'll go buy something that they can't find the ammunition for and they'll buy the gun just to continue hunting. So uh, while, I, you know, it's, the hunting, the hunters are resilient, and, and so we actually feel like it's a uh, they're they're going to they're going to continue to do their passion. Um, so I don't I don't foresee that being sort of an issue with the the, with the license sales. How, how would you deal with being deceived in the legislature? Would you have bipartisan support? Uh, we. We have been <laughs> educating as many people as possible. We've met with all the task forces. We've met with the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, we've introduced uh, uh, our, our bill and, and exactly what it does to a lot of the legislators. We're meeting with the caucuses. Uh, we're, we're not hearing much. You know, that's kind of scary. Uh, we're not getting a lot of commitments. That's even scarier. <laughs> because uh, uh, it, it leads me to wonder uh, whether or not they're seriously considering our licensing restructure or if they have a, a, a different idea or plan of how they're going to fund our department. So overall, overall, we haven't gotten a lot of negative uh, uh, pushback. The commercial side has, has been pretty vocal, uh, especially at the uh, uh, committee hearing. Uh, they feel like it's too much... Uh, uh, they've experienced too many uh, uh, hurricanes and COVID and everything else uh, within the industry, so, so the increase is, is, they feel like, is a, uh, too much at this point in time. Uh, although I have to remind them that it's been 36 years, uh, and a gallon of gasoline 36 years ago was less than a dollar, and today it's almost $3 a gallon. So. You know, we experiencing we are experiencing the same things they are, and shame on us for not having a, a licensing restructure sooner than 36 years. But 
it is what it is, and we have to be, you know, we have to face that. So we're almost last on this list, too. <laughs> ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We give away everything. We're last on this list, too. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm back here for 36 years. Uh, Rob Shadow and Deputy Secretary of Wildlife and Fisheries. We have been asked, well, why haven't you brought some incremental increases? along the way, if it's been 36 years and 21 years respectively for commercial and, and recreational. Well, we did not have a financial problem for the longest. And we were told three years ago when I was in the legislature that y'all still have money in your general fund known as the conservation fund. Why are you here? Come back when you don't. Well, all these years of our self-sustaining, if we would have gone to the legislature while we were flush with money, in their opinion, we would have been met with the same reception. Why are y'all here? Up until seven years ago, you were getting 70 some odd million dollars from oil and gas. Why are you here? Well. We have done what they requested, and we have waited until our expenses, even though they have been drastically reduced over the last four years under Secretary Montese, cannot keep up with the drastic reduction in the revenue. So that, if anybody asks you, well, why hadn't y'all done anything in three and a half decades or two decades, that's the reason. Yeah. And we're all going to answer this question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Secretary Montese said during his presentation that 30, you know, sorry, 46 other states have raised their fees in the last 20 years. The states that have not is Arkansas, Missouri, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. And the reason why is because Arkansas gets a, a 16th of a cent sales tax dedicated to their wildlife and fisheries. Missouri gets an eighth of a cent sales tax. Um, New Jersey gets lottery proceeds donated to them and they also get general funds so the reason we haven't had it is because oil and gas has served as our conservation tax oil and gas has served as our lottery proceeds and as long as we've had money then we, we were operated now you know for the last 20 years and, and didn't really have to come and ask for it so you know now we're just at the time that that that's come come to an end and, and now we're looking at what can we do and we think this proposal is a pretty good one so We, we had four airplanes. We now have three. Uh, we have two seaplanes, and we have, uh, what, what do they call it? A Kodiak. Okay. Kodiak is a multi-passenger plane that flies like a, a tank. <laughs> it gives us the ability to use uh, that particular plane, put more people in it when we do duck surveys or when we do any kind of animal surveys. That's the plane we use. The two seaplanes, we have one located in Slidell, Am I right? Uh, or uh, St. Bernard, 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 Bernard Parish, and we have one here in Baton Rouge. So, so you know, we've got two pilots, and that was my big question. We've got four planes, and we've got two pilots. It's hard for one pilot to fly two planes each, so we've kind of reduced that. And we certainly picked the plane that we use the least, and, and so uh, I feel like with two seaplanes and the, and the Kodiak, we have the necessary equipment we need to get the job done, uh, and we, we certainly don't want to cut too, too far back, you know, reduce our... Do you use those planes for search and rescue, or is it just enforcement? Yes, ma'am, we use it. In fact, uh, with this Seacor thing that happened out in the Gulf, my planes ran the shorelines of, of Louisiana looking for bodies for a week, uh, at least a week. It might have been longer than that. Uh, so, so we do use those planes for that. And we have some locations that, that are, uh, you know, accessible by water only, and, and the seaplanes give us the ability to get right in there and do what we need to do and get out. We also did that Lafayette 
Lafayette Search and Rescue for Mr. Shuffler, who uh, was in an accident at the Chaplaya River. We used the seaplanes to, to go as far down as we possibly could or where we thought the bodies might have ended up. Uh, by the way, he was recovered uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. Any other questions? My question to you, I, I'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. I, I, what, what's your take on our, our, on our restructuring? Do you, do you feel like uh, uh, we're out of line? We're, uh, we're, shoot. I'm all in. <laughs> I mean, you know, General Honore said last week that the list of stupid legislation is getting longer. <laughs> and there's a bill right now, Senate Bill 205, to fix that description. This is the sort of thing we need. Anybody else has a take on what we're trying to do? You know, it's a heck of a thing to become secretary of a, of a department, and the minute you walk in, you think that you're going to be able to do some really awesome things, <laughs> and then you get faced with the reality of if you don't watch your funding sources, you're going to be in serious trouble. And, and we predicted this, you know, that's four years we've been preaching to the choir. We took all the necessary steps like any business would do. I'm not going to wait until I'm bankrupt before I do anything. I was in business, you know, for 40 years. Uh, I ran businesses, and, and I certainly didn't wait till I was broke before I did something to, to make it work. Uh, and, and I took that same idea and applied it here, you know, ahead of time. We, put, we had projected that our budget problems wasn't going to come to be till 2026. But I still, we still began looking at everything we were doing, trying to do more with less, and, and, and kind of projecting of how soon, we, you know, it would take for us to get there. Well, when, you, when you're as subjected, subjected to the Mother Nature as we are, three hurricanes later, COVID hits us, then a nice storm, and you know, all of those things, one on top of the other, oil revenue going down, license sales dropping, uh, that 2026 reality became 2022. So we're running four years ahead of what we projected, so you, you know, uh, we're here and we're there. I mean, we're at the point where if something's not done, uh, we're going to have some serious issues uh, within our department. The 154 people we're, we haven't replaced, those numbers are going to substantially go up, and we're not going to have the biologists to look at the data and do the research out in the field to determine when to open shrimp seasons, uh, how many fish you can catch when you go fish. So certainly what we're going to have to do is err on the side of conservative, because we're the only voice that fish and birds have in this state. We are their voice. So we're going to err on the side of caution, and, and those numbers are going to have to be reduced. And that's something that's really going to hit home, uh, you know, if that has to occur. We don't want to do that. We want to maintain that sportsman's paradise status. John? We, I have, we have a list of people. Uh, CCA has come out and, and said this is the right thing to do. We, we know it's a bad time. Uh, it's going to cost people more, but it's the right thing to do to keep the department whole. We've had uh, National Wild, Wild Turkey Federation has come out and said, yes, this is the right thing to do. We need to do this. Uh, Ducks Unlimited, Ducks Unlimited uh, has come out and Wildlife, Wildlife, Wildlife Fed Federation. So all of those agencies ha that have looked at what we're, we're doing. Louisiana Sportsman's Caucus. And the Louisiana Sportsman's Caucus has also uh, so come out in, in support of us. Very good. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was in your booklet. I hadn't gotten that far yet. Yes. Well, we're picking those up as, 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 as much as we can, and we've had some recent additions to that. And, and every day we're looking for letters of uh, support uh, <coughs> from, from those NGOs and those people that interact with us on a daily basis. 
You guys have been great to us. We certainly appreciate it. You know, you, every time we've asked y'all to send our message out there, y'all have been more than supportive. Uh, we certainly thank you for that and look forward to working with you uh, in the future. Well, Jack knows if you give me time to talk, I'm going to talk, so I apologize. But I just want to let you know one thing that I think that we're doing that's really neat. And Secretary Montesse, when, when he talked about being in business, he was in the alligator industry. And so one thing about the alligator industry in our department is we've worked well together for the last 30 years. That We have a fund, it's called Alligator Resource Fund, that they pay into when they buy their tags or whenever they, whenever they spend money. The industry actually pays into it. It totally funds the alligator industry. So all the employees that work in that, that section, when they travel, with their vehicles, it pays for it. And so every alligator hide that's inspected, every alligator that's released is funded through that industry. We're looking to do that similar thing with the commercial license restructure. So all the gear fees on the shrimp industry will go be dedicated to the shrimp industry. All the, the gear fees in the crab and oyster will be dedicated to that. So whenever our guys are sampling for those industries, then, then we, get, we get charged that it, you know, that industry could take care of itself. When enforcement's doing specific work for that industry, like an opening day or not just general patrol, but specific working oysters and sh shrimp or crab, they get charged to it. So it's sort of like I said, it realigns the funding to where it's industry supported. So the fees are going up, but it's going up and it's gonna keep, basically maintain the integrity of the industry. We're doing the same thing on the recreational side. You know, wild turkey, when you buy a wild turkey stamp, more money's gonna be going to that fund. Duck stamp, more money's gonna be going to that fund. Right now, if you use public, if any public access fee is going to be put into a fund that's used to match those federal dollars that we use to make, manage and maintain WMAs. So when you buy that, if you use public lands, it will be used to support public lands. So that's what we're talking about, some of the neat things that we're doing that uh, I'm really excited about is sort of directing those users to support what they're either passionate about or those industries to support their own industry. So with that, I think I'm out of time. Thanks. Thanks.